I think there's always a, a slight anxiety about anything new, but we had done a lot of preparation work. We probably spent a good sort of four to six months looking at the guidelines, looking at the evidence, and we'd had lots of discussions earlier over the last year or so about whether to introduce it. We used a lot of CPAP, so trying to move away from ventilation when necessary, but there was issues sometimes with weaning babies. You could see they're often quite uncomfortable. We first did our policy in May 2013. We decided to actually make it quite a conservative protocol. We deliberately didn't put any babies less than a kilo onto nasal high flow. So any baby on more than 40% oxygen, on more than six centimetres of water on CPAP, or who had had frequent apneas in the previous 24 hours wasn't considered. Even within three months, four months of, of starting to use nasal high flow, we could start to sort of um, roll out a slightly less stringent protocol. Everyone became very familiar with it and very happy with its use. Six, seven months later, we were using it as a primary mode of support, a secondary mode of support, and also in babies down as far as 26 weeks gestation. The flows that we use tend to be on the slightly higher side, between six to eight litres per minute, but they've all been safely used within a research setting. We tend to have gone with the higher amount because we feel that when we go with the higher flows, we've noticed that the amount of oxygen that we have to give is reduced. We set quite stringent criteria that have to be met before we'll allow a baby to be orally fed. They have to be on less than 25% oxygen, typically four litres of flow or less, very stable. We had previously weaned by uh, every 24 hours by 0.5 to 1 litre depending on the clinical state of the baby and we revised that following the Yoda paper to a much more frequent rate of up to 12 hourly. I think good preparation is absolutely essential and that could take sort of several months before you implement it. Know your team, know how your team learn, look at their learning styles, look at the busyness of your unit and really engage people and empower them because then they own it and they're going to take it forward in the clinical area. The prongs are lovely and soft which is great because they don't create pressure sores on the nose. The practical viewpoint is a bit quicker to set up um, so that, that definitely helps. It is so slightly more mobile, so um, for moving the babies around as well, it's useful. I love high flow. I think that it's very good from several different aspects. It's good for their development. They're able to get their hands up to their face much more, which is, is really quite important in developmental care. You have to be incredibly enthusiastic and positive about it because people are occasionally afraid of change, and it's really important that you sort of you motivate them through it. We actually implemented it earlier than expected because staff just embraced it, they, the resources were available, they were well informed and, and I think people could see the benefits of the baby straight away.